Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video we will be covering what tempo we should train with to maximize muscle growth. First and foremost, let's define what exactly tempo means. Tempo essentially refers to the speed of movement during a resistance training exercise. So a faster tempo means each repetition is shorter in duration, while a slower tempo means each repetition is longer in duration. However, tempo can be measured during two different muscle actions, the concentric and eccentric phases. Let's now cover what these are. Concentric muscle actions are those which require the muscle to shorten as it produces force. So without getting into too much detail about how this occurs, the concentric phase can essentially be thought of as the lifting portion of the movement. For example, this would be the portion of a bicep curl when we lift the weight up towards our body. In this movement, the biceps are shortening to flex the elbow joint, moving the forearm upward. Eccentric muscle actions are those which require the muscle to lengthen as it produces force. So without getting into too much detail about how this occurs, the eccentric phase can essentially be thought of as the lowering or controlling portion of the movement. In our same example of a bicep curl, the eccentric phase is when we lower the weight back down from the top position. In this movement, the biceps are still working, but they are lengthening to control the load downward. If the biceps didn't produce any force, the arm would just fall under gravity at a rapid speed. So in terms of lifting tempo, we can manipulate both the concentric and eccentric phases. Therefore, when we discuss tempo, we need to define exactly which phase we are referring to. Furthermore, there may be different tempo recommendations for each muscle action. So the question now becomes, what lifting tempo is best to maximize muscle growth? When I first got into weight training, the traditional recommendation was to perform a slow eccentric muscle action and a fast concentric action. The rationale behind this was to maximize time under tension with the eccentric phase. However, with new research in the field, we now understand that if we train close to failure, each set can be equally hypertrophic, regardless of rep ranges performed. This suggests that it is probably not time under tension which is important for hypertrophy, but rather high effort levels per set and the amount of volume performed. So this questions the whole theory of performing slow eccentrics for muscle growth. This latest research review analyzed the current evidence on the effects of tempo for hypertrophy. Overall, it was found that the exact tempo we use probably doesn't have any significant impact on muscle growth when proximity to failure is equated. However, the researchers did suggest a practical recommendation that the traditional approach of performing a slower eccentric and a faster concentric may be most favorable for muscle growth. However, many of the studies assessing tempo use isokinetic equipment. This is specialized equipment where the speed of movement is fixed and cannot be changed no matter how much force the trainee produces. So this is not really realistic to what happens in practice. When we perform a set close to failure, we accumulate local fatigue with each repetition we perform. So as we get closer to failure, our rep speed tends to decrease, at least for the concentric portion. So in reality, our concentric tempo will naturally change throughout a set as we near failure due to a progressive accumulation of fatigue. Eventually, if we train to complete failure, we literally cannot lift the load anymore and tempo has completely slowed down. Therefore, we can't exactly control concentric tempo to any specific speed anyway, because it will end up slowing down no matter what. However, what we can control is the eccentric tempo. This is because we are always stronger eccentrically than concentrically, which means even when we accumulate fatigue, we will still have the ability to slow down the eccentric as much as we like. Therefore, for the rest of this video, tempo will refer to eccentric tempo specifically, unless otherwise stated. This is because concentric tempo will be variable and will ultimately slow down and limit performance towards the end of each set. So we have now established that tempo is difficult to control for in practice. And even when it is controlled for, different repetition tempos probably don't influence hypertrophy to any significant extent directly. However, lifting tempo can have some indirect effects on hypertrophy training and the tempo we use may be influenced by other factors too. Let's now cover what factors may influence the tempo we use in practice. The first indirect influence that lifting tempo has is on performance. Generally, a faster tempo allows us to lift more weight or perform more repetitions per set compared with a slower tempo. 
So although this may not influence hypertrophy outcomes, it may have an influence on strength gains. If a trainee has simultaneous strength goals in addition to their hypertrophy focus, then tempo may be more relevant. If you want to get stronger at a particular lift, then it may be wise to perform one to two top sets of that lift with a tempo which allows you to lift the most weight. This would usually be a slightly faster tempo than would typically be used to maximize hypertrophy. Next, we have range of motion. So this is not a factor that tempo will influence, rather it is something that will influence what tempo we use. This is because the natural range of motion of an exercise will determine how long it takes to go from the start to finish point in the movement. So even if we lift with the same speed, it may take longer to complete a repetition of one exercise versus another. For example, it will take longer to complete a repetition of a full depth back squat compared with a leg extension, even with the same repetition speed, simply because the range of motion we move through is larger. This makes it difficult to prescribe an exact repetition tempo duration because the range of motion is variable for different exercises. The next indirect influence of tempo on hypertrophy training is its influence on lifting technique. When training for hypertrophy, we want to use a technique that maximizes stress on the target muscle. This is usually maximized by controlling tempo to stay in control of the weight. If our tempo is too fast, we may make unwanted movements which throw our technique off slightly. This will reduce tension on the target muscle and result in an inferior hypertrophy stimulus. Furthermore, a fast tempo may limit instantaneous feedback from the lift to make technique adjustments. Trainees often use feelings such as the mind-muscle connection and the muscle pump to gauge the effectiveness of their technique. If tempo is too fast, then the trainee may not have enough time to process this information and adjust accordingly. Therefore, we should probably somewhat control tempo to ensure technique is maximally effective. Another consideration for lifting tempo is involvement of the stretch shortening cycle. The stretch shortening cycle is the elastic recoil we get when there is a rapid change from eccentric to concentric muscle actions. This occurs in exercises like squats and pressing variations when we transition from the lowering phase to the lifting phase. For example, the stretch shortening cycle occurs in the bottom portion of a squat, which gives us that bounce out of the hole, so to speak. In relation to hypertrophy, we want to minimize involvement of the stretch shortening cycle. This is because it is a passive occurrence relying on the elastic properties of the muscles and more so on the tendons. So when we involve the stretch shortening cycle, it is not an active muscle action occurring, which means we aren't really stressing the muscle for that portion of the exercise. Rather, we want to control tempo throughout the entire range of motion, ensuring we are maximizing active muscle contraction. The next influence tempo may have is on regional hypertrophy. This is actually a direct effect, but it is not yet a well-established phenomenon. There are early speculations from the research showing that the tempo we use may influence what regions of the muscle grow to different extents. This recent study compared the effects of lifting tempo on regional hypertrophy of the quads. Trainees performed leg extensions with one leg using a slower 3 second eccentric phase and another leg using a faster 1 second eccentric phase. It was found that hypertrophy at the proximal region of the quads, or in other words the upper portion of the quads, achieved similar hypertrophy outcomes, regardless of the tempo used. However, the distal quads, or in other words the lower portion of the quads, grew more using a faster eccentric tempo. We should note that this is only one study and the differences were not all that substantial, so more research is needed on this topic before drawing strong conclusions. However, it does bring up the idea that lifting tempo may influence regional hypertrophy. This may mean that varying tempo for the same muscle group across the week could potentially result in more uniform muscle growth across the span of the muscle. And the last indirect influence that tempo may have on hypertrophy training is its effects on joint stress. As we mentioned, a faster tempo generally allows trainees to lift heavier loads. While this may be beneficial for strength gains, it is also likely more stressful on the relevant joints and connective tissue. This will increase a trainee's risk of injury and reduce the amount of volume they can tolerate before developing joint pain. Furthermore, a faster tempo will maximize involvement of the stretch shortening cycle, which places high forces on the relevant tendons. Therefore, it is probably best to use a somewhat controlled tempo as it will reduce the risk of pain or injury without compromising the hypertrophic stimulus. So to summarize how tempo influences muscle growth, 
let's establish some practical recommendations. First, it seems that the exact tempo we use probably doesn't have any significant effects on muscle growth directly. There is some emerging evidence suggesting that it may influence regional hypertrophy, but we can't draw strong conclusions about this effect until we have more research on the topic. While we often talk about tempo in terms of a specific duration, it probably doesn't make sense in practice to prescribe it this way. This is because the concentric tempo will naturally slow down as the set nears failure, and the range of motion is variable between lifts. Generally, a faster tempo will allow us to lift heavier loads or perform more reps compared with a slower tempo. This may be beneficial for strength gains, but it probably doesn't really impact hypertrophy outcomes. In fact, a faster tempo may throw off lifting technique and potentially increase injury risk. So as a practical recommendation, I think trainees should lift with a controlled eccentric tempo for the entire range of motion. The exact tempo probably doesn't really matter as long as it is somewhat controlled to ensure active muscle contraction through the entire range. In terms of concentric tempo, it should be somewhat controlled at the beginning of the set, then as fatigue accumulates, it will naturally slow down at its own rate, so it's not really something we need to worry about. Thanks for watching, and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.